Hi there guys, me again, Ryan JC, Ryan James Cropper, and in today's video I want to be talking about the economy, more specifically, what the economy is going to look like moving forward after COVID-19. You see, a very, very long time ago, in common villages, they had a different form of currency exchange. They actually decided to do things for each other through pandemics like the one we're in right now and through natural disasters just because they wanted to take care of their fellow man, their fellow neighbor. Right? And so this actually happened to me not too long ago here in Bali. Neighbors came over and offered food. They didn't want anything else in return. I tried to give them money, they said no. This is because they're in tune with their natural innate instinct to care about another person who's a part of their community. You'll notice that a lot of people in third and second world countries still resonate with this way of being. All right? Now this is important because it gets into what we're gonna go back to as a collective. You see, we used to be like that too, until money got introduced to our society. I wanna now break down where we are, where we've been, and where we're going to be before we get into that final stage of, honestly, helping each other without the need of any type of monetary value, right? Anyone watching this video has been a part of the water system I say this because when it comes to any form of exchange, it can be broken down using the four elements, all right? The water system deals with currency. They'll use a lot of terminologies related to water. You know, a bank, putting your money in a bank. The problem with this form of currency exchange is that just like water, it can be very unpredictable, you know? Things can flood, you can go through dry spells and within your bank account. It's not quite, useful when it comes to security, feeling that sense of security. But we're actually moving out of that, and right now we're moving into the earth element, otherwise known as bartering. You know, I have something, you have something. Let's exchange. This is important because a lot of companies right now are losing money. And so because they're losing money, they're having to find new and innovative ways of helping each other out. Not only that, but if you have a pound of sugar and you're missing toilet paper, you can always go to your neighbor and ask for some loo roll in exchange for said sugar, you see? This is closer to our natural state of taking care of one another without even expecting anything back. Because remember those villages I talked about earlier? Well, they ended up shifting into bartering. You know? They ended up saying, well, you know what? I would like to help you out, but I kind of still need this. So instead, I'll give you this other thing that I no longer need in exchange for that watermelon or those grapes or those lemons, you see. And then the Romans started to introduce currency to many other foreign lands. And then it started to trend. It started to pick up the habit, you know. This little coin started to represent value. So I've talked about water. I've talked about earth. Now let's talk about the air element. Right? Pulling money out of thin air. If you've got an online business or if you're used to paying for things on Amazon, you're already accustomed to the air elemental exchange process. If you have a phone in your pocket, a Netflix account, or maybe you do online shopping, again, you're familiar with this process already. Right? You can see where I'm getting at here. Air essentially means that there is no materialism involved. There is no money involved, no physical money as we know it to be. No dollars, no coins, no nickels, no pounds sterling, no euros, no nothing. It's all done by Bitcoin, Skype credits, PayPal, virtual money, okay? It's something you can't touch, it's in the air. And so this represents the silver age of technology when technology started to boom at its best in regard to profiting financially because it's far easier to buy something online as to suppose to driving to your nearest store, as to suppose to driving to the camera shop, okay? And so that's the air element. Some companies right now are having to tap into the air element of financial gain in order to make up for what they're losing when it comes to material goods. You know, no one's buying their products anymore. And so they're having to take their physical store online. Okay, so I've painted the picture as to where we're heading in the future, but let me just clarify, reiterate in a sense. Our economy started off within the water element, 
And then it shifted into bartering, having to borrow because of the COVID-19. And we're having to play around with the air element in order to make sure that we can stabilize our businesses and keep our head above water, so to speak. But after all of this is said and done, as we keep having hard times throwing our way through one calamity after the next, we're gonna be reawakened to this deeper part of ourselves that doesn't think about money at all, that only cares about the other person. And then by doing so, we're gonna start offering our services, not for any type of monetary gain, but because we just wanna see them well. Right? A lot of people right now are in that state. A lot of people, in a sense, have already revolutionized their mentality. They've already taken a massive leap backwards into their old state of being. And so, this is what's happening. You know? Predictions moving forward. This COVID-19 pandemic is loosening up the economy. We're not going to do a complete 180 just yet, not as a collective just yet a few people yes probably even you but to see worldwide change a few things are going to have to happen and so the coronavirus has loosened everything up the coronavirus has set the stage and the coronavirus has caused us to reevaluate a lot of the ways by which we purchase goods and how we perceive what's truly valuable my prediction is that later on this year, okay, life AC, life after Corona, something else is going to happen. Something that's really going to pull the rug out from beneath our feet. And that is completely going to change the economy to the state that everyone is hoping for. And what that looks like, if you can imagine, peace on earth. You know? A little preview. Imagine being able to go into a store, going in, you just shine your badge, your community badge, you go in, there are no labels on everything, there are no brands trying to market to you, trying to pull your attention. There are just containers with sauces, soups, bread, milk, eggs, veggies, and fruits. You take as much as you can carry, and you leave. Imagine being able to do that without feeling like you're stealing. And imagine if this system was set up in every country. This isn't out of the realm of possibility. This is basically what communities do already. We're just scaling up as a first world country. Now imagine if water was free. It is. Little secret, it is. Or a not so known fact, it is. There's water everywhere. Wells, you can dig a well. You can, rather than having a pool, just put a massive sheet across a container and collect moisture out of the air and distill it using household items. Water is free, it's convenient, yet we've been sold the idea that we have to pay for it. From the gecko, we've been sold the idea that we have to pay for food. I can guarantee you, if you just look up online what things are available within your environment, within the season that you're in right now, you can actually find enough produce within the forests, within the fields, within the garden, besides you, if you're outside watching this video, to live, to make teas, to make soups, for some considerable amount of time. And after the month is done, a new month comes in, and new things are there for you to pick. All right? This is called living seasonally, or eating seasonally, or eating in accordance to nature. If we were sold the idea, marketed the idea, taught the idea that food is free as opposed to the idea that we have to go and purchase it, we will feel much more secure during times like this when there is no food on the shelf. You know, When things are seemingly empty, the forager sees nothing but bountiful harvests. You can do this today. Just look online. Things that you can forage within Europe or the States. Washington, Seattle, and start taking massive action towards your independence, feeling as if you can take care of yourself and or your family. Oh, and the fire element. Not many people know what that is, but if you can figure it out, let me know by putting it in the comments below, because I've had some ideas, but 
I'm not quite comfortable enough with them to start teaching them on my YouTube channel. Take care. Peace.